just grab that bottom face there. Okay, same deal here, we'll just extrude it out again to uh, get it flush, so on polygon, select it, and extrude, and we'll do 7, positive. Okay, and isolation mode again, Alt-Q. Alright, so for this one, I think I'm just going to delete everything but the front face. Alright, so all four of the side edges, is top and bottom, delete. Okay, and let's go to edge and exit isolation mode. Just gonna hit Z, okay, and let's check our reference again. All right, so we need a little bit of space at the bottom for this uh, opening here, and we're gonna need some space at the top to account for the actual uh, lip of that handle, just like we had at the top. Okay, so let's grab the top edge first, and we'll just pull it down. All right, give ourselves some space. All right, and we'll just move the bottom one up a little bit. All right, we can always adjust after. All right, so I'm just going to pull them up like that. Okay, and we'll grab the top one and we'll work on the top first. Okay, so let's go back into the left view with that edge selected. All right, and this one looks like it just slants in and then goes up and then comes out into the handle. Okay, so this should be pretty easy. All right, so with that edge selected, I'm just going to shift and drag in. Okay, and we'll go up. Okay, and we'll go out to create the handle. Alright, and maybe down like that. And out. And up. And I'm just going to move that up a little bit. Okay, and then the top looks like it slants a bit, so we'll just pull this in, maybe like that. Okay. Alright, so pretty simple. And we'll go down to the bottom. I'm just going to check this out in perspective. Okay. Not looking too bad. Let's get this bottom edge selected. And we'll go back into the left view. Okay, and I can't really tell what this looks like uh, here down at the bottom. Uh, it looks like it goes in a bit and then kind of goes down and just rolls over into the base. All right, so let's just pull this in on the X, holding shift. All right, and then we'll go down a bit. And then I might just go back and then down. Okay, just something like that. You're not really going to be able to see this when we're done. Probably too good anyway. All right, so that looks a little too uh, high. Okay, so let's go into the left view. So I'm just going to take these two verts and pull them down. All right, I might bring these guys out a bit. I don't want it to look that deep. Okay, so we'll just tweak it like that. We can check it out in perspective. All right, just so it's a little closer to the reference. Again, it's kind of hard to see what it looks like. Um, we might even be able to go down a little more. All right, so let's grab all these guys here and just move them down. We'll go pretty close to the bottom. Okay, something like that maybe. And again, take your time and tweak it to uh, wherever you want, or wherever you're happy with. All right, but that's probably good uh, for now. Okay, so let's exit vertex, go into isolation mode. All right, and then we'll just uh, chamfer some of the edges down. Okay, let me just exit isolation mode for a second again. I'm just looking up, up here at this piece. Uh, I think we might want to add another edge in here. Okay, so let's grab that one there and this one here. Okay, just both sides of the upper slanted piece, and I'm just going to do a connect here. Okay, and we'll do one segment, no pinch, no slide, and okay. Alright, and then I'm just going to move that edge up a little bit on the Z. Okay, we can check this out on the left view. I might just go up like this. Okay. All right, that might be a little better, a little closer to what the reference looks like. And I think we're going to have to adjust the height of a couple of these, but uh, for now we'll leave it and we'll just chamfer the edges down. Okay, so back into isolation mode, Alt Q. Alright, and let's grab 
that one there, the new one, and we'll do this one and the bottom of the handle grip piece. Apologies, I know it's a little awkward to see. Alright, so we'll take all three of those and I might do this one too at the same time. Okay, and we'll chamfer. Alright, and we'll lower the amount down. Alright, let's just do uh, 0 0.2 on those four and OK. And then we'll just grab the one up underneath and this one here. Alright, you can see on the reference picture that that back edge at the top of the slanted piece is really hard, so we'll take the top two and that one and we'll just chamfer these. Three and we'll do it pretty tight. Let's take it down a bit. Alright, we'll do point one on these guys and OK. And then we'll grab this one here and chamfer. And this one's a little softer, so let's go up a bit on it. Let's do maybe maybe uh, 0.4 and then we'll hit apply and we'll just roll it over. Actually, I'm going to cancel that for a sec. I don't know if we want to have it that smooth. Alright, I'm just going to undo that with Control Z. Okay, and I think I want to do it a little tighter. Alright, so chamfer again and let's just go down a bit. Alright, I'll just do 0.25. And OK. Alright, and then down to the bottom here. OK, so let's grab the bottom there. Alright, and this one looks pretty hard from what I can see. So chamfer again, and... I might just do that 1.25 as well, so it'll match the top. OK, so hit OK, and then these guys underneath, you're never really going to see them, so let's just do all three of them at the same time. Alright, chamfer, and we'll tighten these ones up quite a bit. Alright, let's do uh, 0 0.07 and OK. Alright, and now we can exit uh, Edge and exit Isolation Mode. Okay, so I'm just going to chuck the blue shader on there. Okay, and let's close our reference so we can actually see what we're doing a little easier. Alright, just going to hit Z. Alright, so it's not exact, but uh, I think it's close enough. Alright, and let's move these pieces in um, like we did on the top. Okay, so I'm just going to select the middle door piece and go into the uh, hierarchy tab, hit effect pivot only, center object, and then turn it off. And we'll do the same with this guy down here. Okay, and I'm just going to select them both holding control and just push them in just a little bit. Alright, just so it'll hide that outer edge again. That's probably okay right there. Alright, so it's coming along. Uh, let's just do a save. So before we move on and start working on the actual base piece, I think I'm just going to tweak this upper door a little bit. There's something about it I'm not really liking. Okay, I think our little indent here might have to uh, be moved up. And it's maybe a little too wide as well. Okay, so let's just jump into the left view. And we'll go up to the top here. Alright, so I'm just going to go to Vertex, and I think I'm just going to grab all these verts here and just pull them up a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to grab these uh, bottom ones here. Alright, and just move them up a little bit just to tighten it up. I think it's a little too uh, wide open. Okay. And let's grab the back ones here and just move them forward slightly. Alright, it might also be a little too deep. Okay, let's check that out. Right, that looks a little closer to the reference. Alright, I think I'm going to tweak the handle up here a little bit as well. Um, let's go into left view again. All right, and you can leave it uh, as it was if you if you want to, if you don't want to mess with it, but uh, I think I'm just going to uh, make a little adjustment here. All right, so I'm going to grab these guys on the end of the handle. All right, I'm just going to pull them over a little bit more. I think it needs to come out slightly. All right, maybe like that. And it's 
kind of hard to tell here, but it looks like the angle on this is a little steeper than what we have. Alright, so what I might do is just grab this one here, and I'm just going to pull it over, I think, like that, maybe? Alright, we will put the little uh, door in here, so some of the stuff will be uh, blocked anyway. But, uh, yeah, I think that looks a little better. Okay, so we'll do that before we move on. Alright, so, not looking too bad. Alright, so with those tweaks made, I'm just going to save one more time, and we'll move on and create the base. Alright, so let's grab the uh, base piece there and go into isolation mode, Alt-Q. Alright, let's take a look at our reference. Alright, so the bottom is fairly simple. Um, it just has some extruded little pieces and these little slots in between. Um, Alright, let's take a look at this one. Alright, so it's pretty much the same on uh, all the sides. Alright, so this shouldn't be too bad. Um, let's go into edge to start, and I'm just going to drag through the side edges. Alright, let's delete the bottom actually first. Alright, so let's go to polygon, drag through, deselect the uh, sides, and just delete that bottom. Alright, now let's go to edge and just reselect these four. And for this we'll do a connect. Alright, open that up. Um, we'll take off the slide, we'll do two segments, and just pinch them apart. I'm just going to try to add one in here that matches kind of the spacing from the corner as the front, if that makes sense. All right, just like that. So we'll do 73 on the pinch, hit OK. All right, and let's take another look. All right, so we got uh, one, two, three, four, five slots in the uh, center here between those edges. Okay, so let's go through from the front, and we'll just select the back and front at the same time, do a connect, and we'll take off the pinch and do five segments, and hit OK, and we'll do the same thing this way. Connect. Alright, so we have five in between our uh, corner edges there. Alright, and let's grab all of them, and just hold Alt and deselect the actual corner ones. Alright, just so we have uh, 28 edges selected. Alright, just going to take another look here. Alright, so we're going to need some spacing in here, so let's uh, chamfer these. Alright, and one actually looks pretty close to being right, so we'll just say that's cool, and hit OK. Alright, and let's go to Polygon and turn on Ignore Back Facing. Alright, and we'll just select the polys that we want to pull out. Okay, so I'm going to start here on the corner and just go along, skipping the, the uh, thin polys, and we'll just select all the uh, wide ones. Okay, just like that. 32. Alright, and we'll just extrude these out a little bit. Alright, so extrude. I will do this on local normal. And we'll take the height way down. These don't have to come out too much. Let's do maybe just one. Alright, they don't need to be very deep. Okay, so we'll say okay. And then let's go into the top view. Um, we're going to have some bent corners probably here, so... Let's turn off Ignore Back Facing and just go to Vertex and zoom in on the corners. And you can see, because we extruded it um, on local normal like that, sometimes you'll get this uneven uh, situation on the corner. So let's just go to Vertex and just straighten them out. Okay, so everything's kind of even. I'm going to move these up, move these guys out. Okay, and let's take another look at the reference. Alright, so it looks like they kind of have a bit of a bevel on them as well. Um, so let's go to Polygon again, and I'm just going to start on one side here, and just select the front faces. Okay, and I'm going to go around to the opposite side, and select those front faces. Alright, we'll do two sides at a time. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here to a uh, scale, and just going to scale in slightly on the x-axis. 
just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much. And you can look down at the bottom of the uh, screen there at the uh, coordinates and see how much I'm doing if you want to match it. Alright, so I'm going to go very slight. We'll do maybe 92 on the X. Okay. Alright, just like that. And then we'll do the same thing on the uh, opposite ones. Okay, so grab these ones. Go around to the opposite side, grab these ones. Okay, and we'll scale again. Alright, this time we're going to do it on the Y, and you can always look down here. Alright, so let's scale slightly. Alright, I'm going to do 92 again. Alright, might have to do 91. Oh, there we go, 92. Alright, so 92 on each, just so it'll match our previous ones. Okay, and our corner's going to get a little screwed up here, so we'll have to fix that. Alright, so we'll go back out to the front view. Alright, so we'll have to do this again. Uh, apologies for that. Alright, I'm just going to straighten things up. So let's take a look at it. It's going to exit to vertex. Alright, hit F4. Alright, so not too bad. We're going to have to chamfer some of the edges, but uh, before we go any further, let's do a save. Uh, just so we don't have to redo that stuff if we have a crash. Okay, so let's uh, close in the top and bottom. So I'm just going to go to border and just select the top border and control click the bottom one. And we'll just cap these for now. Okay, just so they're filled in. And we're going to have a lot of edges to chamfer here, so I'm just going to, uh, I think, do all the edges at once just to make it a little quicker. Okay, so if we ignore back facing unticked, I'm just going to drag through and grab all the edges. Alright, and we'll just chamfer these down. Right, you could go along and deselect some of them if you wanted to, but um, just for the sake of speed, I'm going to do it. And I think I'll, I'll do these ones that cross here just to make sure we don't have a problem on the corners. Okay, so let's chamfer. Uh, we'll just take it down. All right, this probably doesn't have to be a lot. Let's go maybe up a bit. Alright, we'll just do uh, 0 0.2 and OK. Alright, so we can exit edge. And let's just take a look here. Alright, so not too bad. Okay, so. Uh, let's exit isolation mode here, and uh, you'll notice it doesn't fit anymore with the body because we uh, extruded these polys out. All right, so it's kind of sticking out on the sides again. All right, so let's just fix that quickly. I'm going to do that in the top view in wireframe with F3. Uh, okay, and we'll just scale it down slightly and try to get it to match kind of the case size. Okay, so on the triangle, just go down ever so slightly. Right, just like that. So 98 on the X, Y, Z. Okay. All right, and we're probably gonna have a bit of a gap in here because we did that, as you can see. All right, so let's go to vertex and just drag through all the top verts, and we'll just close this up uh, by moving these up on the uh, Z axis. All right, I'm just gonna go up until it touches the bottom of the body piece. Okay, just like that. All right, so let's exit to vertex and just take a look. Make sure everything is okay. Alright, it doesn't look too bad. Alright, so I think that's uh, close enough. Um, so we don't really have a lot more uh, to go here. A few more pieces. Um, we'll have to add the little feet on there. Uh, you could leave those off if you decided to. And we just have the little lock and the uh, little flap at the top to do. And then uh, we'll be done with the model. Alright, so let's save though now that the base is done. Alright, so let's start working on this little uh, door up on the top here. Alright, it's really simple. We can probably just make it out of a box. Okay, so let's jump into the front view. Alright, just zoom in on that uh, opening. Okay, and we'll go to the crate panel and just grab a box. Alright, I'm just going to drag one out here that kind of fits the size we need. We can do it in wireframe, F3. Alright, so just get one in there. Maybe like that. Okay, give it a little bit of height. 
Okay, let's just pull it forward so we can see it. Right, I'm just going to position it in the left view. Just about there, maybe. Alright, so let's go into the modify panel. Alright, let's just make the width 78. Okay, and the length, we'll just do 4. And the uh, height, we can probably just do 3. Okay. Just like that, and let's go in isolation mode, Alt-Q. Alright, I'm going to convert it to a poly. And just spin around to the back and select the back face and delete it. Don't really need that guy. Okay, so let's go to Edge. I'm just going to throw the uh, blue shader on here. Alright, change the mesh color to black. Alright, so we'll just round over the edges here on the front. Okay, so let's select the top and bottom one and we'll do a chamfer. Alright, I'm just going to take it down a bit. Let's do maybe uh, 0 0.5 or so. Okay, and let's hit apply and let's take this down to a really small amount. Alright, let's do uh, 0.15 on the second one and OK. Alright, and then I'm just going to invert the edge selection by hitting Control I. And uh, we don't really need to do the back edges, so let's just hold Alt and deselect those and the side ones. Okay, and the edges look pretty hard um, on the edges of the side there, so let's uh, chamfer again. And actually, uh, 0.15 might be cool for those. Okay, so we'll just leave it like that and hit OK. Alright, so really simple, that's all we really need to do for that though. Um, I'm just going to put the smooth modifier on this, just to smooth the faces out a bit. Alright, so we'll go into the modify list down to smooth, and I'm just going to use auto smoothing here, because it's quicker. Okay, and let's give this a name. I'm just going to call it, uh, I don't know, slot door, or whatever you want. Okay, and we'll exit isolation mode and just uh, make sure it's looking okay. Alright, so that should be fine for that piece. Alright, so we only have a couple more pieces left. Um, I think we'll do the lock little keyhole next. Alright, and you can see on the reference here, it's, it's kind of weird, um, the shape of it. Alright, so I think I might deviate from the reference for this and just make a really simple one. Um, I'm not going to bother cutting the hole actually into the door for the, uh, the keyhole, so I think I'll do one that's got a little narrower of an opening so you won't see in there and, and notice that there's no hole. Okay, so let's go into the uh, front view. Right, we'll just zoom in where we need it, which is right here. Okay, and I'm just going to go into the create panel, and we'll use a spline for this, I think. So let's uh, go to the shapes panel and just choose uh, circle. All right, and I'm just going to go into wireframe, F3, and just drag one out here. Okay, let's just do maybe uh, 1.9 on the radius for that. Okay, and then zoom in. And I'm just going to choose a rectangle as well, and just create a little slot in here that'll look kind of like a you know a keyhole. It's not going to be accurate, but that's okay. All right, so we'll just drag one out like that maybe, and let's just center it to our uh, circle. So I'm just going to click on the align tool and then click on the circle. All right, and you just want X, Y, and Z ticked here, and say okay. All right, so just like that, um, and let's go into the modify panel. Okay, so we'll make the length two and the width, I'll just do uh, 0.32. Alright, I'm just going to up the corner radius a little bit to round over the edges. Alright, we'll do 0.07 on that, or so. Okay, it's so really simple. And let's right click and convert that spline to an edible one. Alright, edible spline, and we'll just go down to attach and attach our circle to it. Just so it's all one piece. Okay, and let's jump out, and I'm just going to move it forward in the top view so we can see it. Let's go into perspective. I'm just going to hit Z to zoom in on it. Alright, so to get some uh, thickness to it, let's uh, add a shell modifier. Okay, shell. And I think I'll probably just leave the outer amount at 1. Okay, just like that. And let's go into uh, isolation mode, Alt Q. And I'm just going to convert this to edible poly. Alright, and let's go to polygon first and just go around to the back and I'm just going to delete the back face because we don't need it. Alright. And I think I might move this edge here. So I'm just going to put my blue on so we can see. Alright, when you convert a, a, a spline to an edible poly, you'll get these edges. Um, 
cut across from the inside edge to the outside edge. And you can't completely remove those, it does need to have at least one, but uh, you can change the position of it. So let's go down to cut, and I'm just going to cut a new edge from maybe right here on one of those verts, and I'm just going to go up to the top, vert, and click, and right click to end. Okay? And I think I'll do one at the bottom of the hole just to make sure it turns out okay. Um, wait, render. Okay, so we'll just do the same thing. Go vert to vert. And you can tell you're on a vert when your cursor turns into a little tiny square. Okay. And then we'll go to edge and just select this one and control backspace it out of there. Alright, so just like that. Okay, so let's uh, maybe select one of these side edges and do a ring on that and I'm going to do a connect. Okay, and we'll just add one segment. Zero pinch, zero slide. Alright, and then uh, let's go to polygon. And I'm just going to select the front two faces holding control. I'm going to control click vertex, okay, to convert the selection to verts. And let's hold alt and deselect the ones around the uh, keyhole, okay, just so we have the outer one selected. Alright, I'm just going to go to scale and just scale on the triangle just slightly to bevel the face, okay, so let's scale down a little bit. Maybe just like that. Alright. Let's go back to edge, and I'm just going to drag a selection around the hole in the center, okay, and then we'll hold alt and deselect these two edges we cut in. Alright, and we'll jump into the left view, hit Z, and I'm just going to hold Alt and just deselect the back and inside edges of the hole. Okay, just so we're left with the outer border. Okay, and we'll just chamfer this down slightly. Alright, so chamfer. Right, take the amount way down. Alright, we're going to get some weird edges here, but we can fix that in a minute. Alright, so let's just do a really small amount. We'll do uh, 0 0.05 and OK. And let's jump into the front view and just zoom in here. And you can see our edges are all screwed, so let's uh, go to Vertex and just grab this vert and just move it down so it's kind of even. Alright, we'll do the same on the bottom. Just move it up. Alright, just even things out. Okay. Alright, so I think we should probably chamfer this outer edge here too, so let's go back to Polygon. And it should still be selected. If not, just reselect these two faces and we'll control click uh, edge. Alright, and we'll just hold alt and just drag through the center here. Alright, just deselect everything but this outer border and then we'll chamfer. Alright, now let's go up a bit here and round it over. Alright, let's do 0.1 on that and OK. And let's grab this one here and loop it and chamfer. And we'll just take this down and keep that one kind of hard. Alright, let's do 0 0.04 on that guy, and OK. Alright, and we can exit edge. Alright, so a really quick um, little lock, or keyhole, but uh, it should look OK, I think. Alright, so I'm just going to change my color to black for the mesh. Alright, and let's put a smooth modifier on this just to make sure the faces aren't too rough looking. Alright, so back into the modifiers, down to smooth, and I'm just going to tick on auto smooth here again. Alright, so just like that, and let's name it. Just gonna name it uh, keyhole or whatever you like, okay? And we'll exit isolation mode, and let's just position it properly. So let's go into the left view. All right, we'll push it back. We want it to be on the slanted piece here. All right, so let's go to rotate, and we'll just spin it a little bit. Try to match the angle, and then just push it in until it touches the surface. All right, just like that. Okay, I'm just going to take a look at the reference again. Alright, so it's a little lower than uh, midway, so let's move it down a bit. I'm going to put it right there, maybe. Okay. Alright, so just like that. And that should be fine, I think. From a distance out here, it's going to look right. Alright, so now that we have that done, um, we're getting pretty close. We just have to add the little feet. Uh, on the bottom. Alright, so before we do that, let's do another save, just to be safe. Alright, so for the little feet on here, kind of hard to see exactly what they look like. Um, they look pretty simple. Um, just has a little pad on the bottom and a little square leg. Alright, so we'll just do this really simply as well. Okay, so let's go into the top view. Alright, just gonna hit Z. Alright, so we'll just zoom in on the uh, corner here. 
and I'm just going to start off a box. All right, so let's go back to the curry panel to uh, standard primitives and grab a box. All right, and we'll just drag one out here in the corner. All right, not sure how big we'll need it to be, so we'll just make something like that maybe and give it a little bit of height. Okay, and let's just make it maybe five by five. All right, and let's just do uh, two on the height for now, and we'll see how that looks. Okay. So let's just zoom in here so we can see it, and I'm just going to move it down on the Z. Alright, so it's sticking out of the bottom. Alright, might have to be a little bit bigger. Um, let's just make it 6x6. Six six. Alright. Alright, so that's probably uh, okay. Um, we'll leave it there for now, and then uh, when we get the bottom pad piece on, we can position it a bit better. Okay, so let's go into isolation mode and convert it to an edible poly. Alright, and we'll just dump the top uh, and bottom polygons because we won't need them. Alright, and let's go to edge and just select a corner, do a ring, do a chamfer, and we'll just round the corners over a little bit. Take it down just a bit, maybe. Alright, let's do 0.8 and we'll hit apply and lower this down. And do 0.1, maybe. And okay. Alright, and that's it. That's all we have to do, I think, for this. So really, really easy. Alright, just throw the blue on there. Let's give it uh, a name. I'm just going to call it uh, Leg. Alright, and let's start working on the pad. All right. And again, you can't really tell what they look like from here. Um, it's pretty simple. We can probably just make it out of a cylinder. Alright, so in the top view, zoom in here on our leg. Alright, we'll go back to the gray panel and let's just choose cylinder and we'll draw one out here. That's a little bigger than our uh, our box. Alright, maybe like that and give it a little bit of height. Okay, and let's make sure it's centered. So let's go to the line tool and just click on the leg. Alright, again, you want XYZ and okay. Alright, so let's just jump into perspective here and just move it down to the bottom. Taking our look here. Alright, so it's gonna have to be a little thicker. So let's go into the modified panel. I'm just gonna dump the height segments by right clicking the spinner. Uh, we'll put the sides up to maybe 30 to make sure it's a little more smooth looking. Okay, and let's just do maybe 4.4 on the radius and the height, let's do 1. Okay, just to make it easy. And then we'll move it down again to the bottom. Alright, so just like that. Okay, and. It's looking a little plain right now, so let's convert it to edible poly. Okay, and I'm just going to change the color here. Change my mesh color. Alright, so let's go to polygon, and the first thing I do is just delete the bottom one, because you'll never see it. Alright, and then we'll select the top, and let's do an inset on this. Alright, I'm just going to inset it just a bit. Alright. I'm going to give it edge detail on here, so we just want to make sure it's not going to be interpenetrating our leg. So let's do 0.65 and OK. Alright. And then let's go to edge, and we'll just grab one of these edges and do a ring. And control click polygon. OK. And then we'll just uh, bevel this. Alright, so let's open up bevel. And take the height way down. And up the outline amount to untwist the polys. Alright, so let's do uh, 0 0.15 on the height and uh, negative uh, 0 0.15 on the outline amount. That should be cool. And OK. Alright, and I'm going to exit polygon and just go into isolation mode here, Alt Q. Alright, so pretty simple. Let's just uh, soften up some of the edges a little more. OK, so let's grab these, these ones on the top here of our bevel and loop and chamfer. Alright, we'll just smooth this out a little more. Alright, so we'll do maybe... Let's do uh, 0 0.1 and OK. And let's grab this guy here and loop that and chamfer. OK, and we'll tighten this one up a bit. Let's do 0 0.03 and OK. And then the inner one we probably could leave, but let's just do it anyway. OK, so I'm going to select the inner polygon there. Control click edge and then chamfer. Alright, we'll just leave that at uh, 0 0.03 and OK. You're never going to see that stuff anyway. Okay, 
So let's exit edge and let's chuck the smooth modifier on this guy as well. Alright, smooth, auto smooth. And let's give it a name. I'm just going to call it uh, foot pad or something. Alright, exit isolation mode. And let's just see how it looks. Alright, so that's probably fine. Alright, we could have maybe gone a little bigger, but. I think I'll just leave it as is. If you want to, you know, adjust the size, you can. All right, so let's jump in the top view, and we'll just position it a bit better. I'm just going to move it back in, I think, a little bit. All right, so I might just go to about there. All right, I'm just going to line it up on this edge here and this edge here. All right. Let's just make a couple copies of it quickly. Alright, so we'll zoom out and I'm just going to hold down shift and drag a copy over on the uh, X. Okay, and we'll do copy and OK. And then we'll just move in here. Alright, position it the same way. I'm just going to move it over to those edges again right here. Okay. And let's select the other one and the foot pad. Alright, so all four of those. And we'll just shift drag a copy on the Y to the back. Alright, copy and OK, and let's just make sure it's positioned. Alright, so we'll just move it up to that edge again. Alright, so we'll know it's even. Alright, so let's jump out, take a look. Okay, so it's looking pretty good, and I think we're about done here. I'm just going to do a quick save. Okay, so I'm just going to select everything, and just open up the material editor, and just put our gray shader on there. So let's just take one last look. I'm just going to open up our reference again, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Alright, I think we got everything we uh, needed to. Alright, so let's just close these. We don't need them. Alright, so we didn't get it exact to the reference, but uh, I think it came out pretty good. It's fairly close. Alright, so um, I think that'll do it for the uh, modeling part of the tutorial. and. Uh, I hope you got a good result, and uh, in the next part we'll move on and actually uh, start UVing this and getting it ready for some textures. Okay, so that'll do it for this one, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.